So for least common multiple, one of the problems I frequently have is I can fuse it with the other one, the greatest common factor. So when I see LCM or least common multiple, I have to think of what multiple means. So a multiple of a number is that number times a whole number. For example, the first five multiples of 2 are 0, 2, 4, 6, and 8. Now, oftentimes, when you're trying to find least common multiple, you don't bother putting the 0 in because the least common multiple can't be 0, and you're about to find out why. Uh, the least common multiple which is abbreviated LCM, is the smallest natural number. So it can't be the zero, otherwise every pair or group of numbers, at least common multiple, would be the zero. So it's the smallest natural number that is a common multiple of two or more given numbers. So when I see multiple, I think to myself, oh, that's the skip counting one. I could skip count to the multiple. So typically your least common multiple is going to be larger than the numbers in your group. Sometimes it might be one of the numbers in your group. It might be the larger number. Um, the listing method is a possibility, but the problem is the strategy is you can list the first several multiples of each number. Several is very vague. You don't know, uh, a lot of times in the journal it will say, list the first six of this number, or list the first six of that number, and it's there. But you don't know. It might not be within the first six. Um, and says until you find the same number greater than zero in all lists. If you make one mistake while you're making your list, the whole rest of your list falls apart. You know, every number after that's going to be wrong because you're adding the same number over and over again, but you're adding it to the wrong part in the middle. So that's another reason I don't care for the listing method as much. But if I am going to use the listing method, Instead of choosing, I'm going to list the first five or six or something like that, I sort of alternate so that I don't have to go further than what I'm uh, getting at. So I might list the zero first. Sometimes I skip it as well. But I focus on the bigger number, and I put down its first multiple, which is itself, or the first non-zero multiple is itself. And then I think, can I skip count to that from the other number or numbers? So this one would go 16, 32, jumps right over the 20. So then I have to look at the next multiple of the bigger number, 40. Can I skip count to it from the other number? Nope, jumps right over to 48. Then I go to the 60. This one jumps over that and goes to 64. Then I go to the 80, and now this one lands right on the 80. So therefore, that's my least common multiple. Uh, if I had three numbers, I have to be able to skip count to the same number by all the different numbers. So for this one, I'm going to just not write the zero this time. <clears throat> it doesn't specifically say I have to list all multiples, just using the listing method. So my biggest number is five. If I try to get to five from the twos, it goes two, four, six, it jumps right over it. The four goes four, eight, that jumps over it as well. Skips right over the five. So now I'm gonna skip count to 10. The two can get to 10, but unfortunately the four cannot. And all three of them have to be able to get to the same number. So then my next multiple of the biggest number is 15. This one skips right over it, as does the second number here. So then I go to the next number, which is 20. This goes 18, 20. This one, the next multiple is 20. Therefore, I found my least common multiple. It is 20. So that's the listing method, but it has some uh, flaws, especially if your least common multiple is quite a bit far away from your starting point. So if I can clear that ink, I'm going to show you the preferred method. It gets a little bit confusing, so I try to give you a few different people's um, explanations, interpretations, if you will. So this is the way I've attempted to explain it. <coughs> the examples hopefully will make it much more clear. So you can find the prime factorization of each number. And the LCM is the product of each prime factor. So you have to include all of the prime factors, 
but without duplicating factors that are in more than one number's prime factorization. If we included every number's prime factorization list entirely without looking for these duplicates, we'd just be finding the product of the numbers, which isn't necessarily the least common multiple. I might be able to find a multiple that's common to them that's smaller. So I have to eliminate these duplications. But I might need to have the twos in there more than once, or the threes in there more than once, or whatever, because it's repeated in a number's prime factorization. So let's look at some examples. <clears throat> if I have 16 and 20, 16's prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 20's prime factorization is 2 times 2 times 5. Now, um, there is a strategy of going one prime factor at a time, and I'm going to show you that, but then show you a little bit of a shortcut. So I'm going to need this prime factor of 2. But when I do that, I can look at the other lists or the other prime factorizations and say, I've taken to 2, so now do I, can I avoid duplicating that in any of the lists? So that means I personally check off. All right, that one's all set then. Now I take a second 2. And in my other list, I've checked off that now I don't need to take its second two. Then I take a third two. And that doesn't help me anywhere else. And then I take a fourth two. My multiplication sign looked kind of funny, but there it is. Doesn't help me anywhere else. And then I still have to look at my other numbers, prime factorization, to see if there's anything else I need to take. And I do, I need to take a five. So within this list of prime factorization, you should be able to see I can get 16 but I can also get 20 from the prime factors listed there. And that's how I end up knowing it's going to be a multiple of each. But because I didn't duplicate things, it's going to be my least common multiple. And when I multiply it out, I already know that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. I already took that up above. So one of my strategies is I purposely take all of them right away from one of them so I can just write down 16. And then I check off that that took care of those. And then I take care of whatever I still need from the other one. That's a little bit of a shortcut to um, have less multiplying to need to do uh, at the end to find the least common multiple, to find that product. When I have three numbers that are a little bit smaller, two's prime factorization is just two. It's not two times one. One is not a prime factor. Four's prime factorization is two times two. 5's prime factorization is 2. So with that strategy of taking all of them from one of them, I might take these two twos that the 4 has, so I know that equals 4. That takes care of the 2 for the number 2. So all I still need to take after that is the 5. I'm going to get 4 times 5 is 20, which is what we found above with these same numbers. Uh, then I have one that's a little bit more complicated, one that if I try to use the listening method, I'm going to be there a long time, and if I mess up, I'm going to be in big trouble. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and say that 6 is 2 times 3. 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. I'm going to... First, I'll do the taking one at a time method, one prime factor at a time. So I've got this two, and that checks off the first two in any other numbers list. Not just one, so I look at the 16 and go, I've, I've taken the first two, I'm good with that. I look at 36, I've taken its first two, I'm good with that. So just because I've checked it off once doesn't mean I can't check it off in a different numbers list. And then I take this three, and again, that's if I'm going just in order. I look at the 16's prime factorization. That doesn't help me out at all, unfortunately. I look at the 36's prime factorization. That means I've taken one of the threes I need for that. Now I look at my next prime number. That's a 2 here. That takes care of needing a second 2 somewhere. So now I have two 2's in my least common multiple product. So that means I don't need to take two 2's for the 36. I do need to take a third two for this, but it doesn't help anywhere else. I need to take a fourth two for this. It doesn't help anywhere else. And I look and I still have that I need a second three 
for them. So the logic behind it again is that inside here I can multiply out some of these to get six. I can multiply out some of these, this one, this one, this one, and this one to get 16. Or I could multiply out, let's say this one, this one, this one, and this one to get the 36 I need. So I can look at all these prime factors that I've just grabbed and I can um, make each of those initial numbers that I'm analyzing. When I do this method of taking one prime factor at a time, let's see if I can clear this out without ruining my list too much, then I have to multi multiply out the 2 times 3 times 2 times 2. And I might take it, let's see, this is 6 times 4 times, this is 6, so 24 times 6 which is 144. So with that strategy, I get my 144. But if I had taken all of one of my numbers, prime factorization, and preferably one that has a lot of prime factors, I could have started with some of my multi multiplication already taken care of. So let me show you how that looks. Let's see here. 6 is 2 times 3. And 16 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 36 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. So if I'm trying to find the least common multiple, I feel like I might have... No, because I've been talking about prime factors. I don't think I've been saying great common factor. Anyway, least common multiple. Um, I'm going to take it either from the 16 or the 36 initially. The 36 has more variety. So I'm going to just go ahead and take all of 36's prime factors, which means I can just write down 36 as, when I'm, as my least common multiple product here. So I've taken a 2, a 2, a 3, and a 3. So I can look through my other numbers prime factorization and say, I've taken care of two 2's and two 3's. That means I don't need this 2 or this 3. So I can multiply out parts of that to get 6. I don't have to take two of the 16's twos, but I do have to take the other pair of twos still. So when I finish looking at what I've taken, what I've taken care of by taking the 36, I still have these two twos left over. So I know that I need to also multiply by four. So then when I do 36 times four, if it's not a common math fact, you should do all the work. Carry the 2, 144. I'm getting it 144 with a little bit less multiplication on the tail end of things. Let's see what we got for time here. So I'm going to go ahead and post that in inverted division. We might look at later this year.